I was asked by a friend, Pickles, to, um, sorry that the camera just jumped like that because my dogs are trying to get at me. Um, t she doesn't know how to knit, so, and I do. Um, the first thing, 101 kind of stuff, is when you're going to start a project, as you can see, I have a giant one pound thing of yarn. Um, so you know, dye a lot, blah, blah, blah. It says a lot of stuff on here. 100% acrylic. And the reason why you need to look at this is because, as you can see, it has recommendations for what kind of needle you use. So, a lot of people aren't aware of this. Now, this can iron. I actually don't know what that one means, so I'll have to look that one up. Um, anyway, this is a crochet hook trying to see if this will actually get a good picture of it. It looks like it's way blurry. But I'll just tell you what it says. It says use a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And this one says use um, the very bottom right there, which you can't see very well, says use a US 8. Um, to know what kind of needle you're using and to know what kind of needle you're using most needles especially I go cheapo and go Walmart some of them you can't because they only have certain sizes available um, so I want to see if we can get this good but there's actually a number at the end of the the needle head that says you can't really see it in this image um, but it'll tell you what number it is so when knitting you just this one recommends a US 8 for this yarn, US 8. And then you look at the end of the needle, and then you'll have your recommended size. So now that you know that basic, my friend is left handed. I am not. So I'm going to try and teach how to do this first for right handers, and then I'm going to teach it for specifically Pickles, who is left handed. Normally yarn balls like this that you get at the store, you can just, as you can see, it actually shows it on here. You can just pull out on an end, which I did. I'm going to cut this off for a second so I can make a tail. And I'll explain that once I do that because I don't want to jiggle the camera around while I'm doing it. And I'm back. As you can see, I pulled out a great length of yarn from the end of the the giant pound of yarn. This is the tail. So, tail is used to make your the start of your your project. If English would work for me, um, how I learned was see these three fingers. See the shape. That's pretty much the best way to start a tail. And I'm going to show with my fingers. Um, when I figure out how to jumble the yarn and the camera at the same time. So, let's see if I can figure it out. Sorry about the shakiness. Um, the two fingers. Then you see how I took that finger I had out and I'm holding the end that the end of the yarn and then the end that goes into the yarn ball. Looks like a tiny a weird shaped triangle. So once you have this weird shaped triangle I'm going to have to definitely put this down because I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to be able to jumble this and working with the needle. So I will be back. And I was lucky enough to get my lovely assistant so you push down. See, just push down. And I take that yarn and then that is my first stitch. It's actually really simple. A lot of people try to make it more difficult than they need to be. I always go very, very long. I can't see all that. Very, very long. Okay. I go on. very, very long on my end st on my end that hangs. It doesn't really matter. I just do it because it makes me feel better. 
but it also, you'll see why. Anyway, that's how do you that, start. Do, do you should do that again, because we didn't see the whole it doesn't finger matter. thing. Okay. I'm going to redo it with the opposite hand, because okay. I'm teaching for left hand. Okay. That's to normally do it, say easy, undone. Now I gotta be left handed. <laughs> you see, you hold it in the same manner. <laughs> see, that it? You hold it in the same manner as you did before. Mm -hmm. And the steps are exactly the same. Where I'm very not ambidextrous. So this is gonna look sloppy, but it will still work. Just apply the same thing I do hand to this one. I'm just gonna show you that it can work. Even being as, um, and babbliness as I am. See, I have to use my other fingers to help it go along because my hand isn't really that great on this side. So, as I pull it, it's the same thing that I did with my left hand, just way, way not as smooth as I would with my left hand. So that's how you start it. And as you can see, if I don't know if he's in the shop, but there's a dog who's trying to figure out what I'm doing too. Um, but, so where do you go from here? I'm going to show you first on my left hand, because, like I said, I'm way more smooth on my left hand. Say I do the same V, but instead of pulling down, you already have your knot, or your starter. So all you got to do is go through your thumb, pull this through, and you have your second stitch. Pretty simple, but it's going to get messy when I do it on my other hand because the whole non ambient extras thing. So, see, told you messy. Works if I have my strings the right way too. I'm not perfect. <laughs> starting to cry. It's in shadow at the bottom. It took me a minute, but also had to use my other hand to help it, but like I said, I'm not ambidextrous. And that was now our third stitch, using both left and right hand. It's possible, it's just you have to learn the rhythm and get used to it. And um, I would say pickles to start with, this is called technically a knit stitch. Practice that, practice that, practice that, and once you get that down, let me know, and I'm going to do another video for you about the pearl stitch, which is just, we'll get there, I promise. Um, but yeah, there's your introduction to left and right-handed stitching.